Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome back to CRM Tip of the Day's Video Tips, your source for tips and step-by-step -step instruction on the latest version of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. In this video, we're going to do a little bit more exploration on the Microsoft Dynamics CRM Interactive Service Hub. In a previous ver video we went out, we talked just a little bit about you know what it is and, and how you navigate it and how do you get to it and you know working with some of the different dashboard types and streams and, and basically navigating through it. Now what we want to talk a little bit more about is how do you customize it a little bit because with the advent of Interactive Service Hub, there is now kind of a new customization options available. So depending upon if you have the entity is enabled for Interactive Service Hub, there's different customization options available. There's different form customization capabilities that you have based upon those options. There's different dashboard capabilities that you have for entity-specific um, items that you're working with with Interactive uh, Service Hub. So we want to talk just a little bit about, you know, what does the customization piece look like if you're going to be using Interactive Service Hub for kind of your next level of service analytics from an application standpoint. So if I hop into CRM and I go into solutions, and I'm just going to go ahead and open up kind of a baseline solution that we have or a tip of the day solution that I've created. If you go into your solutions, just a couple of things that you'll notice. So here I have several entities that I've brought into this solution. Now, if you look over here on the side, I have two entities that are custom entities, one called event and one called registration. Now, the event is a custom entity that has not been enabled for Interactive Service Hub. The registration is a custom entity that does have the Interactive Service Hub functionality enabled for it. So a couple of key differences that you're gonna see in here is, first and foremost, you will now see a dashboards area. This is going to highlight the interactive dashboard that is specific to this particular entity. So this is where I can create a kind of interactive hub specific dashboard that just highlights this entity that has specific streams and, and items associated with it. The other thing that I now will have within this entity is I will also have an interactive service form or an interactive form that is specific to this entity as well. And that is also one of those things that is enabled when you enable that functionality for the entity itself. Now that's actually done through the entity definition. So if I go into my entity definition and I click on my entity definition, I'll choose enable for interactive experience and then I'll go ahead and save it. And once you, in essence, turn that functionality on, now these key components that make up Interactive Service Hub now become available for you from a dashboard perspective where you can now customize that information. Now let's look at an entity that kind of already has the Interactive Service Hub experience kind of set up and configured. So let's go into Case, which is one of the primary entities that you would see in Interactive Service Hub. If I go into Forms, I can now see my main interaction centric form for the case. This is the main form that would be displayed whenever anybody accesses case cases through Interactive Service Hub when they're working through the application. So you'll notice that from a design standpoint, it looks very similar, but once you deploy it into the application, it's going to look a little bit different. So again, it has a very similar form editor to, uh, and from a design standpoint that you would normally see when you're working through it. However, you'll notice that there's different options available. So in here, I don't necessarily have web resource capabilities or iframe capabilities. I do have the capabilities to include kind of the knowledge based search functionality. So if I want to be able to search knowledge based articles, um, if I'm using kind of the updated knowledge articles, I can do that directly from here. If I want to add a interaction wall, I can add an interaction wall to, to keep track of items that are happening within there. I do have my quick forms and I do have my subgrid. So I do have many of the similar functionalities that you might see from a traditional form customization. I just don't have some of your, you know, map functionalities and iframe functionalities and, and those types of different situations as you're working through. I still have columns. I still have sections. So I still have all of those individual pieces that I can work with from that standpoint. So if you make customizations here, so for example, and I'll just do very simplistic one from, from this standpoint, if I were to come in here and add, let's just say, for example, the owner field and then I go into save and publish. This will then publish that information out. And the next time I load into Interactive Service Hub, I will see the information in there accordingly. Now, if I were to go into dashboards, 
these are where I can configure dashboards for that particular entity. So this is where I can see the cases dashboard that would be displayed from an application standpoint. And so when I double click on the cases dashboard, this is where I can see some of the different visualizations that are associated with this. This is where I can see some of the different streams that are going to populate some of this information into the item itself. So first and foremost, when you're looking at these individual streams, it shows you that the name of the, the item, it tells you the entity that it's being filtered based upon. Now, in this case, it's case entity, and you can only have one filter entity per item that you're working with. You can pick the entity view that you want to base this information off of. So in this case, it's being based off of the My Active Cases. And then you can specify kind of your default filtering scenario. So if I want to filter it based upon when the item was created, or if I want to filter it based upon a specific time frame, which the default is typically for most of these items last week. So then what you have in here is you have different charting options that you can bring into this option. So you then can interact with these charts based upon different situations. Situation. So very similar from a standpoint of working with some of the different charting capabilities that you might have in a standard CRM dashboard chart. Then down here on the bottom, you have streams. And this is where you can insert different streams to reflect different types of views or items that you want to look at. So this could maybe be different cases, uh, different case views associated with the case entity. This might be different queues that have different items associated with it. And to determine how you want these individual cases to be displayed within the application itself. Now, the other piece to this is your dashboards. And so with Interactive Service Hub, you now have what are called interactive dashboards that you can use to display different streams of information and different types of information within the context of the application. And so now if I go into dashboards and I go into add existing on dashboards, one of the things that I'll see in here is I can either add an existing traditional CRM dashboard or I can add an interactive experience dashboard. Or when I'm creating a new dashboard, I have the same type of premise. I can either create a new traditional CRM dashboard or I can create an interactive experience dashboard. Let's go ahead and just add an existing interactive experience dashboard. So these are some of the different dashboards that you would currently see within here. You've got your customer service dashboard, you've got your knowledge manager dashboard, you've got your tier one and tier two dashboards. These are kind of the main ones that we've seen when we've gone in and worked with the application in the past in previous videos. So let's just go ahead and add those three items in. Now, when you go ahead and you open up these individual dashboards, now this is where you can kind of customize them to fit your specific needs based upon the items that you want to work with. So now I can come in here and I have the capabilities to really start adding some of these individual options. So this is now giving me the capabilities to work with different items. So these is where, where I can see some of the specific cases and detailed information about the items that I want to work with. If I want to add another component to this, I can click on this option. I can specify what specific entity view or item I want to work with. So in this case, I can go ahead and maybe specify cases and maybe I'll specify active cases and it will add that particular item. Same with charts. If I want to go into any of these individual charts, I would have the capabilities to kind of go in and define what what type of item I want to work with. So you basically have three different components. You have a stream, which is going to kind of bring in all of uh, specific records for that entity type. You have charts, which will bring in more of an interactive chart that you can expand and you can drill into based upon whatever specific items you want to work with. And then you have tiles that are going to give you kind of summary based information based upon the entity that you have selected. So then you can go ahead and you can save this information. And once you've saved your information, and closed it. Then we'll go ahead and publish all of our customizations. And once we've published our customizations, now if we were to go ahead and go back into our interactive service hub, then we would be able to go ahead and kind of see those items as they've worked. So as this is loading, one of the things that you'll notice is because we made customization changes, it's now detected that the configuration has changed. Again, since this uses a lot of the same kind of mobile framework that your, your tablet and your phone clients use, you're going to get prompted for the metadata changes anytime you work with it, just like you would be working with those scenarios. So it says that we have made some metadata changes. I can go ahead and download that information. That 
does always cause it a little bit more time to, to kind of load that information in. So it'll take a little bit more time to populate it and load it into the application. But then once it's loaded in, then you can kind of go ahead and navigate through and see how those changes had been reflected. So now with the information in here, I now have the capabilities to kind of view this information accordingly as I've gone through. So this is where I can select kind of my individual dashboards that I've chosen. And now I can see how these individual items come into play. So here's that tier two dashboard that we worked with. Here's the task based information that comes in. And now here's that active case tile that we brought in from this standpoint that I would now be able to go ahead and click on and view the underlining records for that situation or that item. If I switch over here, and I go to services and cases. Now I can open up kind of my case entity situation that I have the capabilities to work with. And this is now where I have the capabilities to see the individual cases that I want to work through. I can then go ahead and click on a specific case. And now you'll see that it has that information in here. So here's the case stage and here's the owner. Now, one of the bigger differences that you'll see here is you don't necessarily have the tab structure layout that you would normally have in a CRM form. If I come up here to details, this is where I will actually see the different tabs that are defined for that individual situation. So it's gonna display that information just a little bit differently from an application standpoint. So that's going to do it for our introduction to customizing for Interactive Service Hub. It's definitely something I would just kind of play with. And you'll see that there's lots of unique analytic approaches that you can take with this. It's a, it's a pretty exciting application when you start thinking about some of the capabilities that you can do with it. Um, so that's going to do it for this. I hope you found it informational um, as you're working forward. So again, for all of us here at CRM Tip of the Day, this has been Derek. I just want to say take care. Thank you and have a good one, everybody.